earliest written record of lavender's medicinal properties is by the Greek physician Pedanius Dioscorides in 77 AD. He was a military physician under the Roman Emperor Nero, and he recorded that lavender could relieve indigestion, headaches, and sore throats when taken internally, and it was useful as an antiseptic for wounds and burns. Magically, lavender can be invoked for matters of love and affection, as well as longevity and perseverance. Personally, I am invoking this lavender for elements both magical and medicinal. The magical perseverance and the medicinal stress relief and anti-anxiety component. So today we are going to conduct a perseverance spell using the magical components of lavender and we are going to make a very delicious simple syrup. We are going to use two and a half tablespoons of dried lavender buds, then one half cup sugar to one half cup of water. I also decided to make a tiny bit of pansy tea that I'm going to use as a natural food dye. So all I did was add one full pansy flower to a tiny bit of boiling water and let it steep together for a little bit. And then we'll add just a tiny bit of lemon juice and watch it change colors. And I was expecting it to be a little deeper shade of purple, but I only have one pansy to work with. And if you'll use more than one pansy, then it will turn out to be a deeper shade of purple. First, combine the water and the sugar together and make sure that the sugar is completely dissolved. Then you will add the lavender to the mixture while it is just underneath the boiling point. And I did end up doubling this recipe, so I ultimately used 5 tablespoons of dried lavender buds to 1 full cup of water and 1 full cup of sugar. Now you let them steep together for about 10 minutes and be careful not to reach the boiling point. And now we'll strain the pansy tea with the lemon juice. Finally, we'll strain out the beautiful, magical lavender syrup. Lavender is now regarded as useful for stress, anxiety, exhaustion, irritability, headaches, migraines, insomnia, depression, and digestion as well. Lavender is also known for spiritual healing, tranquility, and the easing of tension. So I thought it would be kind of fun just to talk at you for a second. I feel like today I'm really walking my talk and I have been <laughs> spritzing this lavender essential oil mix along with the patchouli and what did I put in here? Patchouli, clove, and sage, the sage dalmatian along with the lavender. I have been spritzing this around the entire house and I just can't get enough. It smells so good. Um, and it is truly very relaxing, very calming. And although it might look rather clean and tidy around here, basement right now is actually flooding or flooded. Uh, I'm dealing with it just one step at a time. So one of the showers down in the basement sort of erupted and you know, it's 
quite an alarming situation when your house is flooding. <laughs> I know that a lot of people would really be kind of overwhelmed in my shoes in this situation. But, you know, I've used every single towel that I have access to and was able to remove all of the standing water. My mom owns this house, so I did, I call, she lives in Hawaii now, so I called her and we sort of brainstormed and figured out what the problem was and called the professionals and um, it's been a couple days of not having running water, which is always interesting and I'm kind of used to it by now. <laughs> So living in a beautiful house in the forest has its has its quirks. Um, it's worth it, absolutely. I love living out here in the forest. Love all of the animals. Um, although the flooding did did displace my roommates, they are staying with family. So I've been here all alone for the last couple of nights. It's a strange thing. I have rarely spent any nights alone, like totally alone. Um, you know, my roommates have their kind of separate unit on the floor level of the house. Um, and I have so many siblings. So growing up, I was rarely ever very alone. Alone at all, really. And you know, I went to college and you're with your friends all the time and then I moved to Iceland and I lived just right above the people that I worked for and so I was never very alone um, at night. In the daytime I love being alone, I can't get enough of it. I love being alone, it is when I'm the most happy is in the daytime when I'm alone. And in the evenings I prefer company, I prefer to be around somebody. <laughs> Uh, so last night, or the last couple of nights, even the the most mundane sort of animal sounds that I'm familiar with, like the stellar jays are always knocking over this little cage of of bird feed. It's a peanut butter and seed combination with berries, and they're obsessed with it. And it's in a little cage so that they don't just take the whole thing away. Um, and. <laughs> They knock it over a lot though. I can see they're very smart birds and they're trying to open the cage up. So they knock it over and um, often they're somewhat successful with that. But anyway, the sound of, so I'm familiar with the sound of that cage crashing down. And um, usually that wouldn't frighten me in the slightest bit, but being here alone out in the forest um, in a big house with lots of windows you know that strange feeling when you can't really see out and you feel like anything can see you even though it's not like the animals are watching me but it's a strange feeling and we used to have raccoons that would visit and they would eat the cat food that was outside on the deck and um, now that I'm the one living here I keep the cats inside and I feed them inside and so consequently I haven't really seen the raccoons that much they don't come around as often, um, but now that I have all of these bird feeders out, and this is this peanut butter seed combination in particular, that all of the animals just love. They're obsessed with it. So I've attracted some raccoons, and last night was the first night that I have seen them in years. And it spooked me because I wasn't used to seeing them, and both of the cats were inside, and then this silhouette of some kind of shadowy animal was just right there, right outside the window, and he would, he couldn't be bothered, he wasn't afraid. He came right up to the door and was just staring in, and, and then as soon as I saw him and we made eye contact, and he had the cutest little raccoon face, you know, the fear just kind of dissipates, but it's just those funny moments that surprise you. I also recently cleaned out our family shed and found long surfboards and I had them, um, I washed them down and I had them leaning against the wall outside of my bedroom, which has like a sliding glass door. And it was a, turned out to be, it was a beautiful day, but it turned out to be a rather windy night. 
and at some point I woke up and it was just a huge gust of wind I think that woke me up and I woke up just as the surfboards were toppling over and and when I looked like I opened my eyes and I saw some giant shadowy massive figure just it looked as if a giant bear maybe he was 15 feet long, was leaping through the air right outside of my door. That's what I saw in just this moment. And then of course I heard the crashing and it really startled me and I knew immediately when I heard the crashing, I remembered that I had put the surfboards out there. It's kind of a blessing just that moment when you're, you feel, you feel afraid, but it's just for one little moment. It's just this fleeting experience, but you're so alert, you're so alive. Um, and responsive and you're just awake and you know you can go from the deep deepest sleep as I was to being complete like more awake than ever <laughs> so it's not to be taken for granted especially after decompressing and and after filming all of this that if you're watching this you just saw just really appreciating lavender and um, kind of just swimming in the, the aroma of lavender and finding my calm and reconnecting to um, some of the most peaceful moments of my life in the midst of this flooding disaster downstairs and um, being alone in the forest in this house at night <laughs> <laughs> so things that would be usually very stressful and then things that are can be quite scary being alone at night out in the woods um, I'm definitely putting the use the medicinal and magical uses of lavender to the test and <laughs> as you can see I've used almost this entire bottle in <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm so grateful that I made this just right, right at the perfect time. Um, and anyway, I did read another little bit. It is perhaps best known for its calming effects. It is. <laughs> so include this powerful plant in any sleep or relaxation ritual. Lavender can also be used to attract love, luck, and good health. You may also choose to decorate your sacred stick with dried lavender buds to promote a sense of protection, well-being, and joy. And I have to say, before reading this and after burning the lavender already, um, I hadn't made a, a little bundle to burn, but I had just put it in, um, in the mortar as loose incense. In regard to lavender representing good luck, I find it interesting because I burned it after the disaster had already happened. and after talking to my mom in Hawaii and we had called up the professionals to help us with the situation, they weren't going to be able to come and help us out and fix this issue for a number of days. And today they randomly showed up and it was completely surprising um, because they should have not arrived for a couple more days at this point in time. Um, and so that was definitely a very surprising bit of good luck <laughs> and I'd like to give that credit to the lavender um, and I would like to just feel grateful and thankful <laughs> um, and that's all for now and if anyone has any questions please let me know I hope you have a good week